Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rentway Options, and this is a morning market prep video for August 26, 2021. Well, we had a slightly negative durable goods order yesterday morning, and the market went, yeah, don't care. And we set new record highs in the SPY and the QQQ. So what does that mean for this morning? Well, how about we grab ourselves something to drink, buckle up, Let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I really, really do appreciate it. We have kind of an interesting morning setting up with some big economic data and then the worry or concern as to what Jerome Powell might say or do on Friday during the virtual Jackson Hole Symposium. And your guess is as good as mine. But let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. Let's take a look here. Um, yesterday we had a, another push to the upside, but on the Dow we've kind of been running into a little bit of a congestion area, I'm going to call it. A little bit of relaxation here in the bullish push, but it has remained bullish. And what's interesting this morning, ahead of all of this data, Dow futures are trying to push higher and suggest we don't care. We, we just want to go up. And that's kind of what we've seen lately when we get bad news. In fact, there was a story out of Bloomberg um, that said, you know, it's kind of a remarkable circumstance right now where the market has the ability to just ignore all bad news. We kind of joke about it in the right way options um, um, room that good news is great and bad news is good and we just keep driving higher. It doesn't seem to matter. And perhaps that continues. There's no way to say that it can't continue because the bulls just seem to have a ravenous desire to just buy something no matter what the um, data comes out and says in the market. So let's take a look here. Uh, Diamonds continues to stay very, very bullish. We're holding in trends. If we were to um, mark out a channel in here, we certainly have some upside room that we can move in that channel. We wanna watch that resistance area in case we happen to stumble this morning on these key economic data points. But right now, um, bulls are in control and they seem solidly in control in the morning, as, as excuse me, this morning. So do, um, you know, what I've been saying, I guess, continues to be stick with the trend until the trend breaks, um, but don't become complacent because in a complacent market, we will suddenly start to care about negative reports and it, it'll just be like a light switch flips and you never know when that's going to be. So just don't become complacent. Um, let's take a look at the SPY, SPY. SPY, also very, very bullish here, um, setting new record highs, running up this trend. We've had these pretty scary shock waves in the market, but then just rush right back in, push through new records. So we have a support level up here, and you can see we're even trying to push a little bit this morning in the SPY back to the upside, um, even though we've got Asian markets mostly down because Korea raised interest rates, first central bank to raise interest rates, I believe. And um, so um, most of Asia was down last night and um, European stocks are red across the board, but boy, not here. We don't, we're not worried about that. We're pushing to the upside here ahead of these data points. So I'm um, holding in here above that support, looking very, very strong here. Stay with the trend until the trend breaks. Let's take a look at the QQQ. QQQ also new record highs. We broke this support level to the upside. There's really nothing in here that suggests bearishness yet. It does, you know, leave that little bit of concern that even a pullback into here can be relatively painful because of the large point move that that could be. But as long as we hold up above this area, i got to give this up to the bulls. The bulls are definitely in control. And then if we take a look at IWM, 
IWM rallied again yesterday, was pushing up strongly, but then by the end of the day saw just a little bit of selling coming into play. And we did end up respecting that 50 day moving average by the close. So they continue to press here and you can see this morning in the pre-market, we're trying to pump them a little bit more ahead of these numbers. See if they can push up through that 50 day moving average. Right now, IWM remains the weakest of the indexes and we still have a tremendous amount of price congestion right here in this area. And so for now, I kind of have to continue to lean to the bearish side with that 50 day moving average in decline. But right now, once again, I'm not sure anything really matters except buy something. So watch this pretty closely. In case there is that failure, it could be kind of an ugly failure if it does occur. If not, we might be able to just push right through like it wasn't even there, hold it as support, and then we start seeking out these um, highs up here um, in the chart that we've struggled so much to get through. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now, our VIX finally did make a little bit of a break to the, to the downside yesterday, pushing on through. So we did get that little bit of follow through yesterday, but it wasn't super convincing. And we do want to kind of keep in mind here that as we press down, we're quite a ways away from the lows of the market while the SPY and the QQQ continue to make new record highs. So keep an eye on that. Um, could be an interesting, um, interesting day today with these data points coming out, how we might respond in here. But as of now, Q, um, uh, the VIX says, hey, we really are not worried about anything. Um, we just want to keep buying. So that's uh, what we see here. Um, we've got to give this to the bulls. The bulls are showing lots and lots of strength. Then let's take a look at our T2107. Now T2107 is our four week new high, new low ratio. And this is, excuse me, our um, percent of stocks above the 200 day moving average. This is a, a problematic thing for the market. And as I continue to mention, we've got so many stocks that are drifting below their 200 day and we're about 50%, just barely above 50% here in this of stocks above their 50 day and those that are below. So um, we've got kind of this interesting situation going on where we have a lot of stocks that are just not being supported. We don't like them at all. And then those stocks that are very, very, very strong. So kind of an interesting circumstance. And one of the things I worry about is whether or not we're going to have those stocks that are, are pushing and pushing and pushing to and pushing to the upside. Will they have enough energy to lift these up um, because they're, we're dragging around a lot of dead weight here? Or does this dead weight kind of win the day and we run out of that bullish energy and that dead weight starts to pull everything down? I don't know um, which um, would occur here, but let's watch that closely. Now it is nice over the last three days, we have seen a recovery in um, that move, more stocks pushing above that 200 day. But let's just keep in mind, we still have some pretty serious downtrends in this going on. So we still have that battle between the haves and the have nots. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now this is the four week new high, new low ratio. And this is one of those things that, as you guys know, I pay attention to quite a bit. Now it doesn't give me directional moves, how which way we're going to go in the market, but it does tell me when we start reaching pressure points. Now. Yesterday, we were pushed up here. We were touching right up in here um, earlier in the day. And then right at the end of the day, we saw that little bit of selling that came into the Dow, pushing things back down. So we're going to have to watch this pretty closely. We still have room to the upside. If this GDP number this morning, if the jobless claims number this morning provides that inspiration, no reason to believe that we cannot go higher. Also, if we were to stumble, we certainly have opened up a big open space to the downside here in T2122. So be careful to, you know, with complacency here, 
um, we have stretched this market a long ways in the last few days of trading. And um, if we were to stumble, that could make for a quick move to the downside. So make sure you're, you stay on top of that here this morning. And I think a little bit of the selling yesterday at the close of the day was just folks taking profits, getting out of the way, just in case these numbers aren't all that stellar. Let's take a look at our uh, T2101. Now T21 is, is market breadth. And I have to give this one up to the bulls. The market breadth has moved up on this buy wave. And we've been seeing that as a struggle here recently. So that market breadth has in increased and improved. We're seeing a little bit more strength in that. We still maintain this very long-term downtrend in market breadth, but much better than it was just a few days ago where we were way down here scraping the bottom of the barrel so pushed up pretty nicely here and so a little bit of little bit of breath uh, helps out in the market making sure that we have that momentum in play let's take a look at our um, economic calendar for today and this is the thing that um, we're going to have to deal with this morning before the market opens here, we're going to have a GDP number. Now, the GDP number, a Kano Day consensus is that it's going to come in at 6.6, .6, which is a little bit higher. Now, the question is, will as we continue to heat up, as this GDP number continues to heat up and heat up and heat up, will that be a concern for the market or not. Uh, GDP at 6.6 .6 is just a little increase over the last reading. If it comes in a lot hotter than that, that could be a problem. If it comes in less than that, the market may see that as bullish. That inflation is um, going to be in check and we could see the market rally on that. So watch that close. And then jobless claims, we're looking for a modest improvement in those jobless claims. Um, I'm not sure that it matters because we've missed on this number several times and we don't care. We just move up. So watch that closely. Uh, may not be nearly as important um, as it usually is. So watch that close. We do have a natural gas report here today and we have the Fed balance sheet. But once again, we don't care about debt, so the Fed balance sheet being over eight and a quarter trillion dollars really doesn't matter. What will matter after these, after we get through this, these data points, is figuring out what we're, what's going to happen as we kick off the Jackson Hole Symposium, and really the the big news will be what is Jerome Powell going to do on Friday. Will he talk about taper? Will he begin taper? Taper or no taper? That is the question. So watch that closely tomorrow. And I think the market might be a little bit light and choppy as we head over toward that day. Um, just trying to figure out what to do next. Let's take a look at our um, uh, earnings calendar. Now our earnings calendar today is our busiest day this week with um, a pretty decent number um, of stocks uh, reporting, but we do have quite a few small caps in that list that are unconfirmed. So we have 56, 56 companies listed, but still uh, quite a few unconfirmed. But we do have a big move in a big bunch of retail this morning. We're going to hear from Dollar General this morning. It looks like they have disappointed here this morning. We're going to hear from uh, Abercrombie. Um, maybe another disappointment coming in there. We have Burlington. Burlington reporting. Uh-oh, there's another slip on Burlington. We'll be hearing from uh, GPS. GPS, the Gap Stores. We'll be hearing from uh, Schmuckers. SJM Schmuckers. Uh oh, that one's slipping as well. We've got Peloton um, that will be reporting today. We'll also be hearing from W Day and uh, Dollar Tree. So, big round of um, retail um, that looks like is having kind of a rough morning this morning. So, keep a close eye on that as we progress through. Now, you can click the link. Um, below the title of the video that'll take you back to the morning blog and it is a shortened morning blog this morning um, I ran into some problems we had a, 
a pretty substantial storm last night with some hail and I had to uh, go out and take care of a few things first thing this morning. So it's a little shorter than normal. Um, also, I want to remind everyone before we move on that uh, today you still have a little bit of time to sign up today at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be doing a basic options class for those folks that are brand new to options or wondering why or if um, options are something that I should be um, involved in. And we'll be going over the details of options and I will be teaching a just a simple directional strategy with options. So if you're interested guys, make sure you follow that link that's below the title of the video and that will get you to the place where you can get signed up for that class. That kicks off today and looking forward to it. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, let's take a, if you could do me a quick favor, if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you feel the video is worthy, please click those thumbs up buttons, click those uh, or leave those brief comments that helps a lot and I truly truly appreciate it you know the channel continues to grow and we are a little bit different here in that uh, most every place else that you look is full of hype and prediction I just want to look at the charts and I just want to focus in on where that could take me and I got to tell you for um, from I'm just doing this for me and sharing it with you folks out there because um, I can tell you that having done this as a full-time trader for more than 15 years, um, this has helped me stay balanced and control those emotions that we can easily get involved in in our trading that, as you know, can cause lots of problems. So thanks to everyone who does support the channel and this kind of content, and I appreciate it. And also thank you so much to everyone who utilizes that Buy Me a Coffee link below the title of the video. and is supporting the channel that way. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up. Please keep in mind, guys, that we are a little bit stretched out in this market, and some of these are just um, ideas for your watch list. These are not recommendations to buy or sell any security, so keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at a stock BTU. Now, I ended up buying some BTU yesterday. That doesn't mean that it's viable for you. Make sure you follow your own rules and your plan. But I picked this up. I, I really like this trend. BTU has been moving up beautifully here and we punched through some resistance here yesterday trying to move on through. So if we can maintain that bullishness in the market, this may have that opportunity to continue to move on up. And we know China is opening up a new coal power plant um, just about every week. So um, moving up strongly here in BTU and looking pretty good overall. Let's take a look at um, Altria. Now Altria is another p position that I did pick up yesterday and I picked that up with a little bit of knowledge that I think it's early in this trade. But if you take a look, we're breaking that downtrend and we're still dealing with this price resistance in the chart. We poked through it for just a moment um, yesterday. We're trying to see a little bit of bullish follow through, but this is one of those charts, a great dividend payer and a stock that uh, has been of interest to me before. If you guys remember, we took this trade back over here and this just turned out to be a tremendous win and it's very much the very same pattern um, that we saw over there. So Altria is a trade to keep an eye on. And I think probably a better looking technical pattern it, or technical chart is Philip Morris in that same industry. Look right in here, we have this beautiful trend very, very strong, good, strong Divi pair, little tiny bit of a downtrend here, but we're trying to break through that and move on up to the upside, holding this price support. I'd keep an eye on this chart. It might be something you want to put on your list if you're interested in something along uh, those lines in that industry. Now I have to um, continue to make mention of stocks like Cisco. 
Cisco has been very, very strong here recently. Just a rocket ship ride. This needs a rest or pullback before I would have any interest in this chart. And it's one of the things we're seeing in this market. If we can get any kind of bullish move going in the market, the market just chases everything, just chases and extends it out to an extreme uh, amount. So any rest or pullback in here, if we can consolidate, rest for a little bit, we're a long ways away from this trend now. We have stretched out so far away from that trend. Um, it may have to rest quite a while, but keep a close eye on Cisco. These charts just continue to show lots and lots of bullishness to the upside. Let's also take a look at um, some of these big tech stocks that have been really, really strong. Now take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft has finally rested just a little bit, but remains very strong. Now there's news out this morning that they're gonna spend a whole bunch of money beefing up cybersecurity for the government and things like that. So it is possible that additional spending could cause some issues here, but let's watch this as this rests or consolidates. If we hold that gap up candle right there and rest right in this area, come back here, maybe engage trend along this area, there's no reason to believe Microsoft can't go up on higher here in that chart, looking pretty good overall. I think we should take a look at, it's going to be ha going to have to be kind of some selective um, purchasing going on, but take a look at energy. Energy is working this pattern, trying to break through that downtrend. And we saw those oil sector uh, numbers, that oil um, or petroleum status number yesterday support these prices. So if we can pop through these downtrends here in that oil um, sector, there's probably stocks in the XLE that um, will be breaking through and holding, and there may be some early entries into those. Keep a close eye on that. So there's a few stocks for you to consider this morning. I want to wish everyone a very, very profitable day. Good luck with your trading today. Have an awesome one, and we'll see you right back here, bright and early Friday morning. Take care, everyone.